Let's start with why these new guidelines are necessary. What kinds of problems have been occurring without them? Well, one obvious problem is uh, the, the, the land usage right now have 40 years or 50 years or 70 years, depends on what kind of uh, property it is. So if you think about China opened the door in 1979, I mean, if you count in 40 years, it's about a, it's the, the 40 years property is about to expire. So people have concerns about the uncertainty about their usage, usage right? So that is the biggest concern. And so as you were saying, they're, they're worried about no longer owning uh, those properties, I guess, because of the expiration. Um, but has that in any way deterred people from buying into property? Well, uh, it, it depends, right? If, it depends on what the government try to do. If they say, uh, if the government will take the property back, they'll pay, take the land back, then people, of course, they will not buy. But if the, if the government instead are going to extend the land use right, or give them an auto renewal, then people will continue to buy. Okay, so this has been a problem for decades, though. Why do you think China's central government is paying attention to these concerns now? Well, it is, it is not a, a surprise like early Christmas gift. It is actually a, 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 <laughs> almost like a package delivered online. Because back in 1999, there was a legislative plan. According to that plan, China tried to establish a comprehensive property right protection system by 2020. So it is actually on schedule. And uh, this is also part of Xi Li administration's uh, political and economic reform plan. So it is, uh, it is actually under the plan, not the, uh, not the come as a surprise. All right, so it was in the works. Um, what do you think is the overarching goal with these guidelines? Well, I think, it, you know, keep in mind that this guideline not just address the land use right. It is, a, it is actually a comprehensive package. It addresses not only the real property, it also addresses the personal property, addresses the um, uh, even the debt investment, equity investment, address the intellectual property and other, other um, in, uh, intangible properties. So it is a whole package. Um, now, although China is working on protect the uh, property, property right, but it has, uh, the government also sees uh, many problems, such as there is the infringement of uh, private property by the, by the public power and also the weak protection of international pro intellectual property. So the, the government tried to address this issue. Okay, to instill more confidence, I guess. Um, but at this point, uh, these are merely guidelines, right? I mean, what happens next? Well, this is just a guideline. This is just a guideline from the, the, the State Council and the CPC. So I think a different, different level of government and also different legislation, legislative branch gonna implement Gonna, uh, they're going to they're gonna implement this guideline. Yeah, as you mentioned, I mean, it'll be different government bodies that will sort of, uh, sort of iron out the details. But as we know, the devil is in the details. So uh, do you think these, these new guidelines will translate into laws with teeth? I think so, yes. And what about uh, changes to the property uh, the red-hot real estate market in China. Do you think that it will have any impact on that market? No, I think this guideline has more social impact rather than economic impact. Because I think lots of home buyers, uh, I, they don't think this is a, uh, the land use right is, a, is their biggest concern. Uh, to be honest, for lots of home buyers, the land use rights, it's not their decision factor for their house buying decisions. So, um, so I, I would think the impact will be minimal. You think it will be minimal? Okay, yes. thank you so much. That was Stephen Gu, uh, the director of U.S.-China Business Advisory Services in Atlanta. Thank you for joining us.